Coffee. And let's go. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming on and being with us here today with Josephine Mueller from the Social Security Administration. Um, today, we're going to discuss survivor's benefits. And if you don't know who I am, I am Cassandra Taylor, the founder and CEO of Top Flight Defense Incorporated, a nonprofit 501c3, organization that are, that's by women veteran for all women. Well, Josephine, I would like to bring you on. So um, let's get started. Sounds great. Thank you so much for inviting me, Ms. Cassandra. I am so excited to be here with you at Top Flight on your Facebook Live. We are going to talk about survivor's benefits, as you mentioned. Um, but before we get into those survivor's benefits, we're going to talk about some updates that we have with Social Security, and I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Now, my name is Josephine Mueller, as Ms. Cassandra mentioned, and I am a public affairs specialist with the Social Security Administration. What that means is that as a public affairs specialist, I have the opportunity to go out and share information regarding Social Security's benefits and programs with the communities that we serve, with all of you. And when I first started with the agency, I started off as an individual who would process retirement applications, Medicare applications, disability applications, replacement social security card applications, as well as new social security applications. So anything to do with social security, when you would visit your local field office, I was the friendly face that you would see. And that's the position I started with when I first started with the agency. So now as a public affairs specialist, I'm able to share that information with the public. And I have some technical background regarding that information. So I'm able to share with you how you can receive these services and information about the benefits and programs that we have to offer. And before we get into the presentation, I do have to provide our disclosure. Participation in this presentation does not constitute an endorsement by the Social Security Administration or its employees of the organizations and information and products not provided by the Social Security Administration. So we're gonna go ahead and focus on survivor's benefits today, but before we get started, we are going to talk about some updates. Now, this is me, Josephine Mueller, and this is my colleague, Mr. Daniel Summer, who also uh, shares and he comes on this platform with us to share information. Uh, he will be on at some point later on during these sessions, and we are going to get right into the update. Now, what are the updates for 2022? Well, on April 7th of this year, Social Security offices added more in-person appointments that are again, were again offering in-person service with for people without an appointment. So you don't need an appointment to visit your local Social Security field office since April 7th of this year. Now, as we continue to expand in-person service, we strongly encourage you to continue to go online, call us for help and schedule appointments in advance. Now, when you go online, you want to go to socialsecurity.gov or ssa.gov in order to make sure that it is our website. You always want to make sure that that .gov is behind our name. There are sites that are posing as us that are not us, and they might have .com or .something completely else. That is not us. We are at .gov, ssa.gov. Now, once you go to our website, you can do a lot of the transactions that can be done in our office if you visit our website and you create a My Social Security account. If you're unable to do your business online, you can always give us a call. You can call us at our national social security hotline, which is 1-800-772-1213. Now, we understand that sometimes individuals may not be able to complete their transactions online, or if you're having difficulty completing your transaction via phone, you can always give us a call and we can go ahead and schedule an appointment or you can come in as a walk-in as of April 7th of this year, we are seeing individuals in, in the office without appointment. Now, 
Another update that we have is we have a new SSI online appointment tool. Now this is for SSI supplemental security income, which is for individuals with limited income and resources who are, who are either uh, disabled and under age 65 or 65 and older um, and, are, and have limited income and resources may qualify for SSI and the way to schedule an appointment or one of the easiest ways to schedule an appointment is by visiting our website and going to our SSI online appointment tool. Here you can go ahead and request an appointment and somebody will call you back to go ahead and schedule that appointment for you. And that is on our website at socialsecurity.gov. Now, another update that we have this year is on equitable relief. This is regarding Medicare. If you did not or were not able to enroll in Medicare because you couldn't reach us by phone after January 1st of this year, you will be granted additional time through December 30th of 2022. So you can give us a call at 1-800-772-1213 to um, request equitable relief, which means that if you did not or were not able to enroll in your enrollment period during this time frame, you may still have a chance to do it without any penalties if you get in contact with us before December 30th of 2022. Now, this right here is our website. Now, we, I mentioned earlier, you wanna make sure that you go to ssa.gov. So once you type in socialsecurity.gov or ssa.gov, this is what you're gonna see when you go to our website. Now, lots of great information here. I encourage everyone to visit us. If you have not visited, visit our website to visit us because we've got lots of information. You can see information regarding re retirement benefits, disability benefits, SSI, Medicare, frequently asked questions. There's a lot of great resources on here as well. So if you're interested in the topic, all you do is you click on the box that you're interested in and you'll get a wealth of information regarding that topic. Now on the front page, we also have a section where it says publications. Now this is information that's specifically related to whatever you may be interested in. We have publications regarding retirement benefits, spousal benefits, survivor's benefits, Medicare, anything social security related, you name it. We have publications regarding it. So you'll be able to type in the publication that you're interested in or info, you can type in a keyword. So if you're interested in retirement, you can type that in here in the search engine. What will come up is a, uh, all the information that we have regarding retirement. If you type that in the search engine, you'll be able to view it in PDF form. You'll be able to see that and read it if you'd like, or you can listen to the publication via audio. So if you're on the go and you wanna go ahead and plug in your earbuds, you can listen to the publication, kind of like one of those uh, eBooks that you may, audio books that you may listen to, but we have uh, audio social security publications. So this is available to you for free. Now, another resource that we have available to everybody for free are the forms that we provide. So sometimes people call and say, you know what, can I, uh, can I receive an application for a replacement social security card? Can you send that to me? Or can you send me uh, a form regarding the voluntary withholding request? All of these forms here are available for free on our website at socialsecurity.gov. You just click, click on the forms tab in the front page and you're able to print these forms out in the comfort of your own home and you can complete them and then mail them into us. So it goes ahead and it cuts time for us mailing you the form if you're if you call us and request for the form to be mailed you can locate these forms online and it makes it much quicker now of course social security is with you throughout life's journey and part of that journey is when you start working and the reason why i'm going to talk about when you start working is is because when we start working we start paying into fica taxes now FICA taxes, when we're paying into them, we're paying into these taxes so that we can help fund both Social Security and Medicare programs, which provide benefits for us when we retire, if we were to become disabled, it provides benefits for children, for survivors, spouses. So when we're paying into FICA taxes, we're contributing to these programs for these, to these benefits that we can receive later on. Now, Social Security um, deducts 7.65% uh, for FICA taxes from, from us individually, and the employer matches this for a total of 15.3%. So FICA stands for the Federal Insurance Contribution Act, and a total deducted is 7.65. And your employer, of course, matches this. 
Now, of course, before we get into survivors and benefits, I want to talk about retirement benefits first. And the reason why I want to talk about retirement benefits is because when somebody applies for retirement benefits, the earliest a person can, re can apply for retirement benefits is at age 62. Now, age 62 is the earliest that you can apply for retirement benefits. Earlier, we talked about the FICA taxes, right? So when you're working and paying into FICA taxes, you're contributing to your retirement benefit. Or if uh, you were to become a survivor, uh, those benefits, if you know your spouse was contributing to FICA taxes, then you are eligible for those benefits or you may become eligible for those benefits. But I wanna talk about retirement benefits first and then we're gonna get into those survivor's benefits. So the earliest that you can apply for social security retirement benefits is at age 62. And many people ask us, well, what is the best age to start receiving these benefits? And the thing is, is it's different for each and every one of us because it depends on our personal situation, such as our financial situation, our personal health, the longevity of life in our family. All these different factors are factors that we would need to consider in order to make the best decision for ourselves as far as when it's the best time to collect these benefits. Now, in this example here, where you're looking at the screen right here, you'll see that at age 62, in this example, this individual, if they were to take their benefit at this point, 62, they'd receive $750 per month. Now, if the same person were to say, you know what, 62, I feel great, I'm healthy, my financial situation is good, I'm gonna wait until my full retirement age. And in this example, this person's full retirement age is 66. If they were to do that, their benefit would be $1,000 per month. So if this person waited, it'd be $1,000 per month at age 66 if they waited until that point. Now, if this same person were to say at age 66, you know what, I'm gonna wait until 70. That's the maximum time that I can wait to take my benefit is at age 70, I'm gonna take it then, I'm gonna let it keep growing. If this same person were to do that, at age 70, their benefit would be $1,320 per month. Now, as you can see, the benefit is growing growing over time, the longer you wait to take it, the higher the benefit grows. If somebody takes it at age 62, um, they lock their, themselves in at that rate that they chose at age 62. So if, in this example, if this person were to take the benefit early at age 62, they'd receive $750. So it wouldn't increase anymore if they were to take it at age 62, unless there would be a cost, unless was a cost of living increase or they continue to work in the future. Now, some people say, well, you know, what if, you know, I see that it's growing and it's, it, you know, it looks like maybe since it's growing, it gets higher at age 70, should I wait? But the thing is, is you have to, as mentioned earlier, you have to look at your personal situation. It may be best for someone to take the benefit at age 62, depending on what situation it, it is. So this is a good example of how the benefit grows over time. However, it's important to note that there's lots of different factors that you would need to consider in order to make the best decision for you. Now, I mentioned in this example, this person is full retirement age at age 66. And you might be wondering, well, what does full retirement age mean? Well, full retirement age means that this is when a person receives 100% of their benefit. And full retirement age is different for each and every one of us. It all depends on what year we were born. So if you were born between 1943 through 1954, your full retirement age is at age 66, like in the example. But if you were born in 1955, your full retirement age is 66 in two months. If you were born in 1956, your full retirement age is 66 in four months. If you were born in 1957, full retirement age is 66 in six months. If you were born in 1958, your full retirement age is 66 in eight months. For individuals born in 1959, Full retirement age is 66 and 10 months. And if you were born in 1960 or later, your full retirement age is at age 67. Now, once again, full retirement age is when you receive 100% of your benefit. If you look over to the column to the right, you'll see percentage at age 62. If, the if you were to take the benefit at age 62, then it would be reduced. If all those percentages are less than 100% because the person receives less than 100% at age 62. So in the previous example, we saw that the person was full retirement age at age 66. They were born between 1943 through 1954. If that person took their benefit at age 62, they'd receive 75% of their benefit opposed to 100% of their benefit at age 66. 
Now, if you look over to the far right, it says percentages at age 70. All these percentages in this column are significantly over 100%. That is because when you take your benefit past your full retirement age, it starts to grow 8% per year. And if somebody waits all the way until age 70, their benefit is significantly over 100%. Now, that's a little bit about percentages based on your averse. Now, let's talk about what if somebody decides to work while they're receiving Social Security benefits, Social Security retirement benefits, Social Security spouses benefits, Social Security survivors benefits. What if you decide to work and collect the benefits at the same time? Can you do this? And the answer to this is yes, you can. However, if you are under your full retirement age, you wanna keep in mind that you are subject to an earnings limit. People that are under their full retirement age this year in 2022 and are collecting Social Security retirement benefits and earning wages at the same time have a limit of $19,560 this year. And for every $2 that they go over, $1 is reduced from the monthly Social Security benefit. Now, for individuals that are going to be turning full retirement age in this year, but are quite not yet full retirement age. They're not there yet. They haven't hit that month that they turn full retirement age, but this is the year that they turn full retirement age. And they take the benefit in those months before they turn full retirement age. They still have a limit. However, the limit is greater, it increases. For people in that situation this year, the limit is $51,960 in the months before they turn full retirement age. If they're collecting their benefits and earning wages in the months before they turn full retirement age this year, and they earn over $51,960, for every $3 they go over, $1 is reduced from the monthly Social Security retirement benefit. Now, at full retirement age, whether that's 66, 66 in a few months, or age um, uh, 67, there's no limits anymore. At that point, you're no longer subject to an earnings limit. You can work and earn whatever you'd like without your benefit being impacted. Now let's get to the survivor's benefits because social security is there with you if you were to lose a loved one. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about retirement benefits before we got into the survivor's benefits is because I want to highlight the differences. I talked about how at retirement, for retirement benefits, you have to be 62 in order to be eligible to receive those benefits. However, if you are a survivor, you can receive the survivor's benefit as early as age 60. I also want to talk about retirement benefits because if you are a survivor, there's options for you as far as you can go ahead, other options for you. You can go ahead and collect your survivor's benefit as early as age 60. And you, if you have your own benefit, you've worked and paid enough into Social Security FICA taxes to receive your own benefit, you can delay taking your own benefit. And sometimes people choose this option. Sometimes people will choose to take their survivor's benefit, sometimes early. The earliest you can take a survivor's benefit is at age 60. And you can delay taking your own benefit. And that means your benefit is sitting there and growing and it can, it can grow all the way until age 70. And then later on, if your own benefit grows greater than what you receive off of your survivor's benefit, you can convert over to receive your benefit if it's greater. Now, at full retirement age, if you decide to wait to take your survivor's benefit until your full retirement age, you'll receive 100% of, of the deceased worker's unreduced benefit. So if you take your survivor's benefit at your full retirement age, you'll receive 100% of it. However, you can take it as early as age 60. At age 60, if you were to take your survivor's benefit, you receive 71.5% of that benefit. And it increases each month until you wait till your full retirement age to receive that 100%. Therefore, you can receive survivor's benefits any, at any age between 60 and your full retirement age. And as a survivor, as mentioned earlier, you can take your survivor's benefit and delay your own and your own benefit will increase throughout the years and it can increase up until, your, until age 70, and that's your own benefit. Now, who else is eligible for survivor's benefits? Well, children are also of, of eligible for survivor's benefits, and a child may receive benefits if they're not married and are under the age of 18 or under age 19 and still in high school. 
a disabled child may receive benefits beyond age 18 if they're not married and were found to be disabled prior to age 22. And a widow, widower, or divorced widow, widower may get full benefits at full retirement age or reduced benefits at age 60, as mentioned earlier, and as early as age 50 if disabled or any age of caring for a child under the age of 16 or a disabled child. Now, Social Security is with you throughout life's journey, and that was some information regarding Social Security retirement benefits, survivor's benefits. We have lots of publications and information regarding uh, survivor's benefits, retirement benefits, as mentioned earlier on in the presentation, on our website. If you visit us at www.socialsecurity.gov, you'll be able to find a wealth of information there. Now, I talked about how you can do many transactions that you would do with us at the local field office online. Online is the most convenient way to do business with us. And if you go online and you create a My Social Security account, you'll be able to easily do business with us online. And in order to create an account, you'll go ahead, you'll want to go ahead and click on create your personal My Social Security account. You'll want to go ahead and answer some questions and then enter in a username and a password. The system will guide you through the process. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and use login.gov and you'll see when you click in, sign in to create an account, it's gonna take you through the steps and you'll be able to create a username and a password. So right here is the blue icon, sign in with login.gov. If you already have an account, you can sign in that way. If you don't have an account, you can create a new, new account where you see down here at the bottom left, it says create an account. You can go ahead and create an account. It's very beneficial to create an account because if you have an account, that means no one else can create that account for you. So you're preventing any fraud from occurring to you. You're also able to verify and make sure that everything looks correct on your account periodically. So you're able to review your earnings records to make sure that those are all posted correctly. Everything that you've worked and earned every year throughout your lifetime is posted correctly. Um, that's important because Social Security uses your earnings record to calculate your monthly social security benefits. So it's important that those earnings are posted correctly to the record. So it's good to have a My Social Security account and periodically ensure and take a look at those earnings to make sure that they were posted correctly. You can also look at estimates on your My Social Security account. You're able to see what you would receive if you were to take your benefit early, um, at early retirement age, if you were to wait until your full retirement age. You'll be able to see um, what those estimations are. You'll be able to see if you were to become disabled, what you would receive at, you know, at, at different, at if you were to become disabled, if you are a survivor or your children are survivors, you'll be able to see what they'd be eligible for. So it's a great way to keep yourself updated and have a snapshot what your benefits uh, are estimated at. So you want to go ahead and go to my social security account, click in, click on create a new account, and then follow the prompts to get started. Now, other things that you can do online is you can request a replacement social security card, you can request a replacement Medicare card, request proof of income. So if you're receiving social security benefits, you can print a letter that shows how much you receive every month. You can sign up for or change direct deposit information if you're receiving benefits, change your address, telephone number. Um, but one of the most popular um, transactions on our website is or with the My Social Security account is requesting a replacement Social Security card. Now, if you are requesting a replacement Social Security card, when you're in your My Social Security account, it's going to look like this. What you're seeing here on the screen is an example of the My Social Security account. You would click on request a replacement card and then enter in your ID information, follow the prompts. Once you get to the end, you submit your application and you'll see your card in the mail in about five to 10 business days. Of course, you can always do business with us online at www.socialsecurity.gov or you could always give us a call at 1-800-772-1213. We are available by phone and we understand that if you're not able to do your business online with us, you can always give us a call and a representative is more than happy to help you over the phone. And you can always visit us as well. We have been open to the public uh, to see walk-ins as of April 7th of this year. Now, another thing that we uh, like to mention when we are presenting information to the community to you is that 
there are individuals that are calling and they're saying they're social security representatives. However, they are not. They are posing as social security representatives. They're aggressive, they're threatening. They're asking for your personal information, your social security number. If you get a call where somebody is aggressive and threatening, that is a red flag. Social security representatives will never do that. We will never call you to be aggressive with you, to ask you for gift card, credit card numbers, uh, for immediate payment and return of a higher benefit amount, we're, we're never going to ask you for that. And we're never going to tell you we're going to suspend your social security number. So if you get a call like that, please just hang up. That is not us. And you can report that call to, to uh, our online at oig.ssa.gov or by phone at 1-800-269-0271. Now, of course, we want you to be informed. We want you to just hang up if you receive a suspicious call. We won't threaten you. We won't suspend your social security number. We're not gonna demand immediate payment. These scammers try to put pressure on you in order to get you to give them your information. And we want you to know that we would never do that here at social security. So please just hang up and report that call. Now we have updates. We have our COVID-19 updates page on our website. If you like to uh, keep yourself informed and you want to keep yourself informed on social security information on any updates or uh, changes, you can do that by subscribing to our COVID-19 updates page. You can subscribe via email or via text message. If something comes up where there's a change and you've subscribed, you will get that update immediately via email or via text message. Whichever way you signed up, you will get an alert. And of course, you can always follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So if you'd like more information regarding Social Security's benefits and programs, you can find us there. A wealth of information on our website as well as on our social media platforms. So I hope that um, you enjoyed this presentation today and were able to obtain some information regarding Social Security's uh, benefits uh, and uh, retirement benefits, survivor's benefits, some updates. Uh, we appreciate uh, being here. Uh, Ms. Cassandra, thank you so much for inviting us and for allowing us to share this information with the community and with our top flight viewers. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Josephine, for coming on and giving giving us um, the information provided. And it was a lot. And um, I understand I was like, oh, she zipped through there, but it was a lot to zip through. Um, so are there any questions? We have um, two viewers on Facebook, but no one has posted a question. So what I'm going to do before I ask any questions, I'm going to stop the recording because it for privacy reasons.